Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 31. Written by Pepper Antique. James's first ride, his first willing ride anyways, was fantastic. After leaving Keeler, Amina, and Arte behind it took him about five minutes to catch up to the main group of the clan riders. When he did the other riders whooped and hollered his and Steve's names. Their mounts nagged at Steve's mane and tail, earning themselves headbutts and staggering claw swings from Steve. But they were playful and half-hearted. Steve was playing with them. James used the ride to get used to riding Steve. Luckily Steve's fur was soft and smooth, though it still smelled terrible. He hoped that Steve would jump into the pools at the falls and take a bath. Steve still had the enchanted muzzle on, his fire still being a risk, but he didn't seem to mind too much now. What James did realize as the ride went was that he needed footrests. His feet kept losing their places on Steve's sides, causing him to have to readjust every few minutes. He also started to teach Steve some basic commands. He would yell, left, or right, while pulling Steve's fur on that side to get him to turn. After a while Steve picked up on it, and by the end of the ride James only had to say the command while lightly pulling, and Steve would turn that way. James wasn't sure if this was the right way to train Steve, but it felt right. Steve, it seemed, was as smart as James had thought while teaching him about their bond. Regardless, for some reason, riding the forty-foot-tall monster seemed natural to James. It felt like riding a bike. Only most bikes didn't breath fire or try to kill you. It definitely felt more natural for him than riding Ernie the horse had. Besides slowly teaching Steve basic commands, James also spent most of the ride marveling at the other mounts and learning about the other riders traveling beside him. The most fascinating of the creatures were the wyverns. There were only three of them traveling with the group, but each of them was a massive flying creature, one of whom was so large that it probably could have lifted Steve in a single claw. The wyvern riders would occasionally swoop low, pick up some random creature from the woods or plains that the group was traveling near, rip a ragged piece off to eat, and then toss the remaining pieces to the creatures beneath them. They were like flying refueling stations for the land-based mounts. When James asked a nearby rider about it, they confirmed that that was how the wyverns kept a band of clan riders going over long distance. James felt kind of bad that Steve's muzzle kept him from partaking but he was amazed at the simple efficiency of the operation. He asked the rider why the dragon riders didn't do the same thing. The rider just shrugged and told him that dragons are too greedy to give up their food. Instead their main job while the clan was riding was to range out and look for threats, their ability to fly or climb made them great at taking up surveillance positions. That also seemed very effective to James. It took three hours for the clan to reach the waterfalls and they were everything James had heard about them. He'd gotten the suggestion from a dwarf that had been patrolling on the walls of the castle. According to the dwarf the falls were actually a rare set of spring falls that actually originated in the deep dark. As a result most travelers stayed away unless they were well-equipped adventurers. Lots of denizens and monsters of the deep dark would use the falls as a way out into the world, so it could be dangerous. On the other side of the equation, the semi-volcanic nature of the springs resulted in an incredibly lush area around the falls. Additionally, the fact that the falls were on northeast side of the mountain meant that if a person stayed overnight they'd be treated to a beautiful view of the sun rising through the planet's rings, while relaxing next to the fall pools. The dwarf assured him that it was a beautiful place to go, and that an entire mob of clan dracrid riders should be more than capable of handling anything that might pop out of the cave that the falls came from. The dwarf was right, it was beautiful. While the woods around the capital had reminded James of the conifer forests all over America, the springs were surrounded by what reminded him more of a jungle. There were even palm trees. At least they looked like palm trees, the fruits didn't look like coconuts though, more like giant blueberries. It was also warm. Very warm. And as the party neared the falls James could smell the sulfur smell that he'd expected when the dwarf had said that the falls were actually a type of hot spring. When James finally got to the pool at the bottom of the falls he saw that a makeshift camp had already been set up. The faster of the riders, Jixel among them, had brought out numerous tents, canopies, and camp-style furniture. It looked like old-timey pictures that James had seen of old safaris. 
he also had no idea where any of it had come from, none of the riders' mounts had any large cargo on them, just saddlebags. As he and Steve rode up a cheer rose from all the riders present and Jixel turned to look at him, Maxel was behind her drinking from the water of the pool. Welcome. How was the ride? She asked as she walked up. Steve lowered his head to smell her and she pet him on the side of his snout. How'd he do Steve? It was good. Definitely need some um. What are they called? The things you put your feet in. Stirrups. James said as he gave the back of Steve's neck some scratches. We'll have to measure him up for the saddle when we get back. She said. Was that the only issue with riding him? Honestly I was surprised when you emerged from the cage riding him in the first place. Is that not normal? James asked as he clambered down Steve's side, Steve laid down as he did, making the drop a bit easier. James wondered if that was intentional, or just because he was tired. Probably both he imagined. It's not. Jixel replied. Most riders need at least a day or two of earning more of the creature's trust. Some need even longer. She gestured at the path behind them and James saw Xalia walking into the clearing with Amina and Artair on her back. Artair needed almost a week and a half. Nobody has ever started out riding? He asked incredulously. Of course they have. His heart sank a bit. It's just rare. Maybe one in every. Hundred or so, riders manage it that fast. Just rare is all. That made James feel at least a little better. He decided to change the subject. So when do you think I can take his muzzle off? The other riders were capable of having their drakes fed by the wyverns while we were riding. I felt kinda bad that Steve couldn't get any. He admitted. She looked at him for a moment, still petting Steve's nose. Behind her Maxel was watching Steve very intently, and James had a feeling that the yellow drake was feeling jealous of the attention Jixel was giving another drake. Hum. It's good that you feel such empathy for him so quickly. She thought for a moment. Technically we can take it off any time you want. All the drakes here are trained enough that if he tried breathing fire too close to anyone they would gang up on him and teach him why that's a bad idea. Really? He asked, amazed that the creatures could understand that concept. Oh yes. Every creature here has, at some point, gotten their flames too close to their rider. Remember, they feel our pain just like we feel theirs. They know the hazard of a breath attack near their riders, and will do anything to avoid it happening again. She looked up at Steve. He'll learn it eventually too. Oh, I guess that makes sense. He gave Steve one last good scratch. The drake was watching the other drake swim in the water and he was stamping his feet, clearly eager to join. James slapped Steve's side and felt a light slap on his too. The drake looked at him curiously. Go on. He said while pointing at the others. Go have fun. James gestured again. Steve paused for a moment, turned back toward the water, and then took off at a sprint. Several riders still setting up camp had to jump out of his way. Then the massive drake dove into the water head first. Maxel dove in after him and began harassing him. Wow. Jixel said, watching Steve go. He's a smart one. He already knows that phrase? Honestly. I'm not sure. But yeah, I think he's a lot smarter than we realize. James said. Interesting. She said to herself. Anyways, food's already cooking. I'll show you around the falls a bit. Then we can talk more about training Steve, and the bond you two have now. Plus you can meet a few more of the higher up clan members. That'd be great. James admitted. The two of them walked towards the falls, talking the whole way. A fellow rider handed them both pints of ale, another rider offered one of the giant blueberries to James. Oddly, it tasted like a peach. As he walked and talked James thought of his situation. To him, the members of Clan Dracrid felt like the right people to be a part of. He found himself at ease around them. It was a good feeling. 
even if it was made somewhat bizarre by all the fire-breathing monsters that formed the connecting bond between all of them. Later James, Jixel, Amina, to a lesser extent, Artair, and all the other riders, partied late into the night. And this time James made sure to only get a little bit drunk, 